Hello there everyone, I'm UXW Bill and I'm out here on a furnace service call today. The complaint was that the blower was making an unusual noise and then apparently it started making an even stranger noise and then it just stopped completely. So as you can see I've started to take everything apart here. And now that I've got the blower wheel partly exposed, I'm going to have to remove some of this wiring to go any further. But I've gone enough to see that there's definitely something up here. <laughs> and this is interesting. I wondered if there was something in the blower wheel or around it. Maybe a dead mouse, maybe a clump of fluff from one of the kitties or something like that. But no. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I should get a better angle going here. There you go. I know you can see it there. See that yellow thing in there? That's a level. How does a level get into the furnace? I have no idea. It certainly couldn't have come from up there. And I doubt very much it was sucked in through the return. Oh, that's classy. I wonder what that coat hanger's doing there. <laughs> I don't know, they do have a filter in it. I don't know what somebody was doing with that. I'm going to unhook some of the wiring on here, see if I can pull this out a little bit further and see if I can maybe reach in there and get that level out of there. I'm hoping that it hasn't hurt the blower motor. They were trying to run this. It does turn freely, but that doesn't mean that the little motor hasn't taken damage. So let me see if I can get this a little bit further out of there and we'll take a closer look at it. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, from the Grand Prize Heil Furnace Raffle Box. <laughs> I'd say this thing's been in there a while, and it looks like it's definitely done a couple of go-rounds with that blower wheel. But how on earth did it ever get in there? Yeah, that vial's pretty dusty. Well, let's just see here. I have to look into that. Maybe it actually caused the blower wheel to shift on its mountings if it hit that thing hard enough. Sounds like there's a little bit of roughness in those bearings. Though not an excessive amount. We'll just put it back together and see how or even if it runs just as soon as I've tested that capacitor and made sure it hasn't expired from this extra workout. All right, let's see how our little buddy the capacitor is doing here. It's supposed to be 10 microfarad. 9.43, 9.42, okay, it's fluctuating around a little bit, but I'm going to call that close enough. By the way, if anybody knows where a person can get the data logging software and hardware cable kit for this ideal multimeter, I would certainly love to know that. It appears to have been discontinued. I haven't actually tried asking ideal yet. Maybe they'd have an extra sitting in a back room somewhere, but I really kind of doubt it. But it would be kind of nice to... Well, I take that back. I already have a true RMS data logging meter, but it'd be nice to have another one. Well, it's all back together. Time to see what we get. I love it. A floppy disk label used as a filter change indicator for the furnace. It's probably only sad that I actually know where that label came from. I'll guarantee you nobody has changed that filter in probably three years, never mind three months. <laughs> all right, should be ready to go. Let's just see what happens here. Ooh, that poor thing sounds like it's in trouble. Yeah, I think it's been hurt. It really doesn't sound good. Oh, 
yeah, that motor's in big trouble. All right, it never ceases to amaze me how cheaply some things can be manufactured. So I've got this new motor in here now. And they actually did put the little crimp-on, push-on style connectors on the capacitor terminals. But they didn't do the same for any of the motor speed windings. And I guess if one wanted to be charitable, they could make the assumption that maybe they figured out in the field that there might be an application somewhere that didn't need these. But really, no more expensive than these things are, although these were pretty expensive. I got ripped off at the auto parts store. <laughs> You'd think they'd just put them on there and let the guy in the field determine that and cut them off if he didn't need them. But let's see if we can get this thing hooked up and get these people some air conditioning again because they'd really like to have it and I'd really like to give it to them. All right, I've got all the wiring hooked up and that means we've reached the point where we're ready to have a smoke test. For those of you who don't know, not only is that a longtime staple of some of my videos, it's also when you turn the power on and you see where the smoke comes out and how much. And then you adjust the smoke dial accordingly. <laughs> All right, so I just turned power on and nothing smoked. But what we really need to do is to see this thing run. And in order to do that, I've got to jumper out these terminals here. This will force the fan motor to start if everything is all right. Here we go. Also have to check the rotation. Boy, that airflow is impressive. All right, let's see if we can see our rotation here. Is it actually spinning in the right direction? Should be going clockwise. I don't trust the camera on this because the conflicting frame and motion rates will conspire to make you look dumb. I'm going to say that it is. It looks like it's going the wrong way on camera, but it's not. Here again, the two different frequencies are beating against one another. Yeah, it looked like it was turning the right direction to me. So I'm going to finish putting this thing together and test these folks' air conditioner out. Alright, as you can see, I went ahead and tied down those reversing direction control wires for the little motor. I attached them to the framework that goes on the motor's belly band to hold it in place. Because I don't really believe for a moment that it wouldn't try to ingest them over time. And I'd rather not have that happen for a lot of different reasons. Not the least of which it'll be expensive for everyone involved. Yeah, I know, I actually used a zip tie. Somebody ought, someone probably ought to call some kind of police or another. Because UXW Bill is using zip ties. Alright, and there we are, all wired up again. We'll put the doors on this thing and see how well it happens to work. Make sure it heats and it cools. All right, let's go ahead and give this thing a try. That certainly sounds a lot better. We'll test the heating and the air conditioning modes. Well, it took me a while to find one, but there's a supply register. And it's definitely supplying. And the condensing unit is condensing. 